let's move it on to a bit of a story, I think, that's turning out. Unai Emery and Aston Villa. 6-1 winners at home to Brian. Um, Hat-trick for Ollie Watkins. Um, again, masterclass from, from midfield. Brilliant. I know you want to t- talk about him. Mm. But um, really interesting game, Rob, because I think we both agreed this one kicked off. Two well-coached teams, two teams who know what they're doing. I think, yeah, not t- trying to get to similar spaces, both in Europe, both lost in the League Cup th- this weekend. Um, if somebody said to me before the game, there's going to be a 6-1 winner here, I would probably have said Brighton. <laughs> We would win the game 6 1. Well, I, I just don't I didn't just, see. It's hard to, yeah. I, I think Brighton have that capacity. If they get you on one of their days and they're playing all that football, I, I would have said Brighton. So, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm saying that as a compliment to Aston yeah. Villa in terms yeah. of where they are, what they're doing under this manager is incredible. They, they, only Man City have got more points than this calendar year. So, the end of last season, the start of this season, only Manchester City have got more points than Aston Villa. I, I, I got to say, I, I'm really, really enjoying what's happening at Villa. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I'll tell you why. Because Brighton, there's many, many teams that have really struggled yeah. to handle the different ways mm. that Brighton build up. Well, yeah. Whether it's through the middle, whether mm. it's through the fullbacks, whether it's they, roll, they roll balls into strikers when yeah. everything else has failed, the goalkeeper yeah. chips the ball in there. Villa were ready for all aspects. Correct. And we looked at it really closely and the two the two front players for them, yeah, DRB and Watkins, mm. played 10 yards apart yeah. so they couldn't, from the goalkeeper and the centre-backs, couldn't play through the middle. Yeah. They go wide, OK? So the Settle. strikers then shove them that way. Mm-hmm. The, the next ball has to be in field. Yeah. Conza and, and Pau Torres, yeah, ready, ready for that ready, ball up they? to the front players. Yeah. They win the ball back. They strangled them. Mm. And the high line enables that. Yeah, now, <clears throat> there's a risk to the high line. Of course. The first weekend of the season, I remember Newcastle, saying, United, wow, yeah. this high line from Villa yeah, when Newcastle cool. popping the ball in behind. So there's a there's an inherent risk with it. Correct. And a bad day when they can't press in midfield or the, mm. the, the structure's not right, yeah, and the, the little flip played, over the yeah. top to quick forwards is a real, real problem. Yeah. Brighton never tried that. That's, yeah. that's mm. the main criticism of Brighton. But in terms of the setup, the high line to squeeze the game. Yeah. So just as every, you know, high line, it's almost a dirty phrase in football, Rob. Yeah, when people don't like it because all the space line. behind you. But yeah. if, if it's done with quick fall defenders, yeah. organised pressing, yeah. the benefit is that when you play high line, that means everybody's together. You keep them in and their you, half of the pitch. Yeah, and there's yeah. like, wow, everybody's yeah. it's compact, yeah. it's tight, yeah. and it's hard to play around it. Mm. Um, so that, just in terms of the tactical setup, yeah. well done, Unai Emery, mm. because that side of it worked well. And you've got other players that, that showed up and some of the football and the way that the full-backs create the width, yeah. not the wide players in midfield. Mm-hmm. That was McGinn and Zaniolo. They could come inside. In, yeah. I mean, I don't want to go on about that because it can be a little bit dry, yeah, the tactical no. side of yeah, it. But, but the, for our listeners and viewers out there, it's different. And oh. that's why we look forward to the game Brighton and, and, and Villa because they do things yeah. very differently and very, very well. What's great about us and Villa, and again, you, you, you're doing your prep for, for the games. That I read a couple of interviews. It was a concert who I thought was excellent again, uh, centre-back, uh, centre in terms of that high line and, and knowing that how they're going to play. And it was interesting that he said, we have a setup for Chelsea that we worked on last weekend. They won 1-0. We'll have a different setup for Brighton, which you say it's not lining them central, letting the ball go wide, yeah. but it gets like, played like, in. Like tweaks to their tweaks grand, to the yeah. grand So they blueprint. have the brand blue, yeah. blueprint of how we're going to play and what we're going to do, but we need to tweak this because it's Brighton and they're going to play this, this way. Yeah. And that's what top-class coaching is all about. That's the difference between Steven Gerrard and Unai Emery, mm. right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, and, you, and it's been an obvious improvement yeah. since yeah. the manager's gone there. Um, just, just on individuals, Rob, and I want to take this opportunity to to bring in my underappreciated performer of the weekend mm. and it's not going to be Ollie Watkins I think he's pretty appreciated in general what he's doing maybe he's, not the England manager yeah, not maybe not him, but they yeah. might make yeah. Southgate maybe not he was there at the game actually Southgate so yeah. maybe October's it's a good time to get a hat-trick in front October. of him October yeah the yeah. internationals but my underappreciated is John McGinn and I know he's a fo- like the captain it. of the football club but if you watch this game back and, and look at the highlights, which we did many times, he yeah. was involved in at least three of the six goals directly yeah. Yeah. by doing something that was, that was at, I would say, outstanding, but really effective. Through passes, crosses, runs, combination with the front two players. And he, doesn't, he doesn't, maybe doesn't look like you're, 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 I don't know, you're flipping Rolls Royce <laughs> of a midfield player. He's a stocky little guy, big backside. He can't half play. He can't half play. And, he, and by, you know, he's not a winger. 
but he still yeah. has, a, has a massive effect on the attacking player of Aston Villa because of his work inside, yeah. right? He's not a wide midfield player, mm -hmm. he's an inside attacking guy that gets in those little spaces. Yeah. And his game, I thought, was, was outstanding, and I'm sure I get plenty of pats on the back because it was pretty outstanding this yeah. weekend, but a player in general, John McGinn, He's a good little footballer and had a brilliant game. Yeah, it's a great shout because I think you, you, if you talk about Villa, you get caught up in the great goalkeeper who's a big personality. Yeah, we're all centre backs and yeah. Tyron Meigs. The front two, Watkins and Diorby and Catuai and Buendia and all those. You, you sometimes forget about John McGinn. And he's, you're right, Robbie, he's, uh, to compliment him. And we spent a bit of time with the summer series. Lovely guy, really into his football, loves being captain of the football club. He's a bit throwback. He's a bit throwback, a Scottish player who's, you know, different build, you know, good engine, got good energy, lovely left foot, sees a pass, old school, sees a pass. He's technical. Technically he's good, really, yeah. really good. And, uh, yeah, it's a good shout because he's the kind of player who, when you talk about Villa, you, you often just brush past, oh, John McGinn's one of them. John McGinn's really important mm. to, um, mm. to Aston Villa. And, and, yeah, good shout for underappreciated performer of the week. What about Brighton, Rob? Just... Um, off day all too, round. Too, too many games for them? Maybe too European many games, games and rotations. He changed it at half time, put three subs on, uh, didn't he? Uh, Pedro, Pedro came on, Ansu Fati came on. Lamptey came on. And Lamptey came on. And Adinga came on. Yeah, Adinga came on a little bit. Got a little bit more pace. Maybe yeah. looks to try and go over the top. Get, gets a goal. It's interesting, isn't it? Because, um, you know, the European games, which is a great adventure, Europa games, a great adventure for them. I think they've got Marseille coming up mm. this week. But, mm. you know, th those games are yeah, going to take the tolls and rotations are going to be. Interesting, you know, keeping the quality. Evan Ferguson started with Welbeck. They came off at half-time. Can you have too many changes to a team? Can, can Brighton successfully rotate and still maintain the quality to so win I, Premier League games? It's interesting. So what I think Brighton need now to do is understand the rhythm of, Euro, of what European football means. The travel before, the travel after, the recovery. They're not so many days on the training ground. You know, we, we're used to the certain six, seven, eight teams who probably know that, Rob. And it's interesting because one of my friends is, is, is quite senior at Chelsea and he talks to me about how the day before the players get there, some people are travelling, the players come, they have to get, you know, right beds, right training place. There's lots of little stuff that we don't <laughs> even think into. about that goes into it. But it's all new to Brighton. They haven't been yeah. there before. This is their first European campaign. So yeah. I just think getting used to all those good, things yeah, yeah, and, and, yeah. and then being right, you know, to play a Villa team that are well set up yeah, it's hard. is going to be hard. And this league, is, as Pep said, is hard week, yeah, in, week in, week out. Yeah. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.